Hey there, I'm Mark, and I'm going to go over how to make a killer first three episodes on Kindle Vela. I'm going to keep this super short because you don't got time and I should be writing. So here we go. And welcome back. All right, so I'm Mark with Unlimited Story, unlimited-story.com, a channel dedicated to writing, world building, marketing, and most importantly, getting things done. If you want to support this channel, the things that I do, just check out my stuff on Kindle or Kindle Vela. Kindle Vela is what I do, and that's the thing. So here's my quick disclaimer before I really move into all these uh, tips that I have because, you know, my tips don't work for everyone. So here we go. I'm just going to read it right here because I actually did a really good job taking notes. Okay, no, these rules don't work for every genre, but overall I'm noticing a trend on Kindle novella. Um, of course, there are exceptions. You know, if you're super, par super popular, all that stuff, you can ignore these rules, and I've seen it, okay? So if you are well-known, all that jazz, you can take your time. You know, you can add a little bit more exposition and so on, and it probably won't affect you. On the other hand, I've seen people who just... You know, they throw you right in the middle and, you know, they give you uh, exposition along the way and that seems to be working really good. Like, I'm noticing that the people who are doing well, they can really just kind of start pushing quick. And here are your tips for writing awesome opening first three on Kindle Vela, the best one I saved for last because, you know, YouTube analytics and so on and so forth. So here we go. Uh, first paragraph, you really want to read, grab the reader's attention. Now, that goes without saying, you know, that's a normal thing, but you may want to try to put something in that's really just spicy, raunchy, whatever your genre is, whatever will really grab their attention. You can have something really um, strange or obscure, just something that they're not expecting, and that'll be like, oh, well, I need to find out the answer or solution uh, to this thing. Um, don't start with scenery. Don't. I mean, again, I have seen people do the complete opposite of what I'm saying, and it's worked. Okay, so it does. It, this isn't like math where it's like, yo, this is definitely the answer. Different strokes for different folks. Different readers are going to approve of different things. But I'll tell you this right now. Um, nowadays, readers really just want to get started. Okay, so take that for what it is. Next tip is stick to what your description says. So your description slash what you know the person clicked on that they wanted to read. You kind of want to follow that. You want to give them what that you promised in that opening description because if you don't you know okay i'm supposed to be reading about uh cowboys ninjas and all that jazz if you're not giving them that and you're setting up this whole other setup you're just gonna end up upsetting your reader so just give them what they asked for make a promise in your description and give it to them you know the whole premise the whole goal of writing these stories is to give them what they asked for if not you're just gonna you ain't going to be in a good place. Next up is avoid unnecessary exposition. Okay, so people are writing somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,000 to 1,500. That's like a norm on Kindle Vela. Uh, you can go, of course, down to 600 and up to 5K. But what we're seeing now is most people enjoy that nice, comfortable 1,000 to 1,500. That way they can read an episode in about 10, 15 minutes-ish, depending on how fast they read. And they're good to go. You know, people are comfortable with that. So just avoid really dropping a big exposition bomb unless it's necessary. And then find a way to kind of like massage it in so it doesn't seem like it's an exposition bomb. For episode number one, you definitely want to end on a cliffhanger. Cliffhangers are super, super key to uh, Kindle Vela, but definitely episode one. If they don't get past this, you know, if you can't bring them from this cliffhanger into episode number two, they're never going to get to all the other good stuff. So basically bring the best you got. Okay, with the plot and everything that you have established, just make it as cliffhanger worthy as possible and then get them to episode number two. All right, and author note. So that is the last thing that these uh, people are going to read before they potentially either close the episode or move on to episode number two. So this is kind of another opportunity to kind of get your reader to convert. So there's a good opportunity to introduce yourself, make yourself personable. Um, people like people like them, so kind of be relatable. You want to let them know that, hey, one, you appreciate that they're reading your stuff, but also, hey, um, you know, you, you do want to build like a legitimate relationship. A lot of people throw it on their social media, but I will also add uh, it's a good opportunity to build like a teaser in, you know, like a last second opportunity to say like, hey, this is what you can kind of hope for in episode number two. You really want to push them to get into episode number two. All right, so now you're on episode number two. You have a little bit of a breather because you can feel pretty confident that if they went from one to two, they can make it at least from two to three. So if you have a little bit of exposition that you want to throw in, this is a good opportunity, but really you should just be trying to 
push the plot forward for your episode number three cliffhanger, which is going to be basically the deal breaker. I shouldn't say deal breaker, but it's where you hit the paywall, which is the highest barrier of entry. So take that for what it is. And episode number three, this is where you're going to be building up tension essentially the entire time. You really want to be pushing and pushing and pushing. So that way, when they reach the end of episode number three, they have this monster cliffhanger that you've been building up potentially since episode number one. And this is where it's all coming to fruition. This may be that opportunity where you're like, hey, this is the transition from normal life into what you promised in your description, like, hey, this is it. Or you may have already put them in that, uh, put information from the description into your story. So they may already be there. And now this is like one of the big um, changing points, you know, cliffhangers, you know, it could be some type of climax. It's probably going to be a type of climax. So just know that this is one of your opportunities. Actually, it's the only and last opportunity you have before they you know, can either say yes or no to your story. And again, episode number three is a big, it's a big deal. I mean, everyone I know, every author I know sees a drop off at episode number three, where a person's like, am I really going to be willing to invest in this? I mean, these first three were entertaining. And a lot of people will sit down with their first three all in one, you know, all in one sitting. And they will just be like, okay, I read these three. Now do I want to keep going? You know, again, it's just an opportunity for them to take a break, take a breather and say, is this really where I want to invest my time, effort and energy? So don't get don't get bent out of shape if people don't do it. Even the best of the best notice a noticeable drop off in the amount of likes and reads and all that jazz in their stories. But this kind of stuff is supposed to help at least try to convert as many people as possible and give a story that, you know, people really want to continue reading. And now for my biggest and best tip, and that is get beta readers, get people to beta read as many people as you can to read your first three. The first three really matter. I mean, of course you want to read everything. Don't let them just stop at three, but really it's a good opportunity to get feedback, especially from seasoned beta readers about, hey, what's working, what isn't working, what's confusing, what needs editing, because you need these first three to be spotless, polished as good as you can. And those are my tips for writing a killer first three episodes on Kindovella. If you have any questions, feel free to throw something in the comments. If you have suggestions, throw that in the comments. I read pretty much everything that shows up there. If you like this kind of stuff, consider subscribing or at least checking out another one of my videos that YouTube recommends. Peace.